welcome back. Today we have an awesome ornamental edible gardening expert with us. Her name is Nikki Jabour. She has a radio station uh, that hosts a radio show herself, and she's written some rather beautiful books. I love her books. Hey, Shauna. Hey, Rich. How are you guys doing today? We're doing well. Thanks for coming on the show. Fantastic. So happy to have you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. (laughs) Tell us a little bit about, you've had some exciting things happen this year, and I know that you have one book that just came out. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, um, that is the book that you contributed to. Thank you so much, Shauna. It's called Groundbreaking Food Gardens, and essentially it came about because of my curiosity as a gardener. I'm always wondering what other gardeners, specifically food gardeners, how they do things, what they like to grow, how do they stake their tomatoes. I mean, there's so many questions for food gardeners, so I kind of stopped um, about 72 of my favorite food gardeners from across North America and the UK, including you, and um, made you, you know, <laughs> contribute to the book, answer my many questions and emails and all the ways that I annoyed people for about a year and a half. Um, <laughs> and this book is the end result, so basically it's taking a look at all these incredible food gardeners and how they do what they do, and, you know, they shared a lot of great information with me, so that's what this book is about. What is a cold frame? How can somebody, how can an average consumer make one out of, you know, on a small budget and what's the purpose for it? Well, I think a lot of gardeners think of cold frames as a magic box um, because, you know, it's essentially just a bottomless box. Usually it's made out of wood, um, but they can be made out of plastics or concrete blocks or bricks or lots of things. Um, But essentially it just creates a microclimate around your plants, you know, and you can seed vegetables or even start seedlings for your flower gardens and things like that in there so much earlier. Like, for example, there's never a day in my garden, and it's about 2,000 square feet, my food garden. Um, There's never a day I don't have at least 30 different types of vegetables to harvest, even, you know, in January, February, March, April. There's still a lot of food up there, and it's because I use devices like cold frames, uh, and they shelter salad greens and root crops and and leafy greens like kale and lettuce and spinach and all those great things. Um, so a cold frame is just a great, easy, inexpensive way to extend your garden and extend the harvest. And, uh, you know, you can even make them out of straw bales. Surround a garden bed mm-hmm. with straw bales, top it with a, you know, a piece of hard plastic or an old shower or an old door, um, you know, and boom, you've got a cold frame. So you're, you're harvesting edibles in outdoors in January, February? Yeah, and again, I live in Canada. And you live in Canada? <laughs> We get a lot of snow. Yeah, I have she to rocks. my cold frames in midwinter when you lift up the wow. cover and it's like two feet of snow around the top of the cold frame. Uh-huh. And all you look down into the snow pile and see, you know, all the carrots in the cold frame. That's uh, got to yeah, freak people I mean, out when you show them pictures of that or show them that in person. Because, you know, I think the average person would think, no way there's plants growing, especially something that's ready to harvest right now. It doesn't freak them out. It gets them excited about gardening. I, which think, is I it. think they question it first. Like, you know, my first book, The Year on Vegetable Gardener, people see the cover, which is me in January at my cold frames. And when we did the cover shoot for that, I said, listen, you can, you know, photo edit my hair, but do not touch the way the vegetables look. You'll have to realize <laughs> this is exactly how they look. When you lift up those covers in January, February, you know, March, it is green in those cold frames and it smells like spring. And uh, it's just incredible. It's, it's, and the winter garden is so, I mean, it's ridiculously, you know, no work whatsoever. So I think people are really coming around to stretching the seasons. Let me ask you this, Nikki. Starting seeds, do you start the seeds outside in the cold frames or do you start them indoors in the wintertime and then move them out? Uh, uh, I- I mainly start my seeds, they're direct seeded in the cold frame, and usually for late fall, winter, early spring crops, things are actually seeded, um, you know, in like September, depending yep. on the crop. Uh, carrots are seeded in early August, but most things are seeded like salad greens, mosh, and kales are seeded in September in the cold frames directly. And then as, you know, the space empties out come February and March, when we have more day length as well, more sunlight, uh, any empty areas get reseeded. You know, again, it might be really cold outside, and there might be snow, mm-hmm. but I'm not trying to grow tomatoes or zucchini. I'm growing the cold tolerant vegetables, so I can start seeding lettuce and spinach and arugula and kale and things like that mm-hmm. in the empty areas of the cold frames in February and March, and they're just gonna they're gonna grow. They grow takes a little bit longer to germinate. You I was know, gonna instead say of maybe the soil temperatures got to be a lot colder. Yeah, exactly. So it's a little slower to start. But as long as they have that sunlight and the cold frame creates that microclimate and captures the solar energy, they will grow rather quickly. I'm still harvesting long before my neighbors are doing their spring planting. We are at the end of our show time, uh, but I wanted to ask you, what is the next step, next adventure for Nikki? What are you doing this year? Well, I, I, I co-own a website called Savvy Gardening with a great bunch of garden writers, so we're really growing that. Uh, I'm working 
kind of next book I really should be doing right this very second. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm still writing for magazines like Fine Gardening and Birds and Blooms and Horticulture Magazine. As if you, in your spare time. Yeah, right. my spare time. <laughs> what a spare time. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for being on our show. I hope you'll come yes. back sometime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Shauna. I really appreciate thanks, it. And I would love to come back. I um, learned a lot. As usual, when we have these guests, I always learn something new. I'm, I'm an accredited horticulturist, been in the garden center industry for 15 years, and I'm still learning new things every time we bring on one of these experts. So, exactly. And Nikki was no it's exception. It's about gardening, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks again, Nikki. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Is your lawn being ruined by moles and voles? Bonite has the solution. Bonite Mole Max is an effective repellent to use against moles, voles, rabbits, gophers, groundhogs, squirrels, skunks, and other burrowing animals. The environmentally friendly Mole Max formulation makes it a great product to apply in areas where children and pets play. Just apply three or four times per year to send nuisance animal pests away. If your lawn needs some repair from mole damage, use Mole Max RX with Lawn Revitalizer. This will help repair your lawn while repelling the moles and voles. Bonite's Mole Max and Mole Max RX. RX are available in a granule and easy spreader application or in a convenient five-pound shaker applicator for flower or vegetable gardens. Bonite products are family made in America. Bonite Mole Max Mole and Vole Repellent is available at your local hardware store, garden center, or farm feed store, or go to bonite.com for a retailer near you. This product is not for sale.